Hello everybody and welcome to this video. I'm going to show you how to make pagination in Excel 365 and this is required um, to have 365 for some of the functions that we're using so don't try this at home if you don't have it. Um, what we're doing is called pagination and as the dictionary says it's the sequence of numbers assigned to pages in a book or periodical. So all that means is if you have a large set of data and you only want to show one page at a time and flip through it like a book this is how you do it. So I got some stock data that I downloaded just for a sample here. And you can see it's a lot of data and we're gonna set up pagination on it. To begin, we're gonna to go to a cell here and put in the offset function. Okay, so the offset function works like so. It begins with a reference, which is the starting point, which is the upper left corner of the matrix you're gonna create. Then it goes into a row offset, which is the vertical offset, then a column offset, which is the horizontal offset, the height, which is the number of rows to display, and the width, which is the number of columns to display. So we're going to start from cell A2 in the stocks worksheet. And the reason is we don't want to include the header at this point, because then the header would be on page 1 of pagination, but not on page 2. So I'll show you how we'll add that in later. So for the rows offset, we want the first page to be zero offset because we want to start from A2 with zero offset. So page one, we need to be zero, so we're going to subtract one. So it's going to be the page number minus one. And we're going to multiply that by the number of rows per page. So on page two, it's going to show rows 11 through 20. And on page three, it's going to show rows 21 through rows 30. Okay, then we don't want a column offset, so we're going to put zero. And for the height, we're going to put in the rows per page, which is 10 for right now. And for columns, we're going to put seven, because there's seven columns in my source data. And if you hit enter, you can see we've sort of already got the pagination set up. You can change the pages here and cycle through them. You can change the rows per page to display and see how it updates as you change the pages. Okay, so now we're gonna add that header in, and to do that, we're gonna use the vStack function. We're just gonna put that in front of what we already got, and you say that you can see the prompt is array one and array two, array three. Basically, it just stacks arrays on top of each other. So for array one, we're gonna put in the headers from the stock tab. And we're just going to hit comma, and then we already have array 2. That's what we already built with the offset function. So I'm going to close parentheses, and now you can see the header here. Change the pages, and the header stays in place. Okay, so now let's say we don't want to see all these columns. We want to see only certain columns, and we want to see them in a certain order. So what I'm going to do is use the choose calls, which is choose columns function. I'm just going to put that right in front of our existing code. And then the way this works is you give it a numeric input for the columns that you want to return. So out of these seven, let's say we want to show column one, column two, column three, and column six. So we would go comma one, two, three, six. Close parentheses, and you can see now that um, we have column one, two, three, and six showing. And let's say maybe we want to switch the order around. You can do column two in front of column one. So now it'll be date, ticker, close, high. The default won't know necessarily how to format it. So the first time you run this, you might need to set the formatting. Uh, to currency or whatever you want. Um, I think the last thing for this project would be to set the data validation for the page number. So once you go to page um, 99999, you see there's no more valid data. These are all zeros. So what we're going to do is we're going to determine the last page that would have valid data. And that would be uh, row 25,171. And the way you can find that is count A, and then stocks, column A, my cat is going crazy out there, 
So 25,171. And we're going to divide this by the number of rows per page. So this would be the number of pages that we're showing. So 1,678 and change. So we want to be able to show 1,679 pages. And that last page may only have two or three items or one item, but we still want to show it. So we're going to round this up, round up. And we're going to round it up to the zero place and apply that. So 1,679 pages, and we don't want to be able to create a page number above that. All right, so how do we do that? We do that with data validation. So select the cell you want to enforce a data validation on. This will prevent the user from inputting a value that you don't want them to input. So we're going to go to data validation, and we're going to go to um, well, it looks like I already have it in here. We're going to go to whole number. So it'll start, it'll look like this in the beginning. Whole number between 1 and cell E17, which is our maximum page number. And um, we're going to change the message that it shows. So if they violate that, we want to say, attention, please limit page number to maximum or something like that whatever you want and then hit OK and um, just for formatting purposes I'm going to put this here with a left align I'm going to hit control 1 to go to the format cells custom and then delete this general here and put slash space and then the number so when you do a custom format like that, this slash isn't actually part of the uh, the number in that cell. So if you wanted to say like equals that cell plus something else, it it knows that that's just a number. It's not really slashing a number. If the slash was really there, it wouldn't let you do a mathematical operation like that. So anyway, let's say um, we wanted to see the page number that we're on out of the maximum page number. This is how it would look. So there's some other stuff we could do for this project, but um, I think it's more like out of the scope of this simple project because this is pretty simple. Um, we could make some VBA buttons, which wouldn't be very complicated, but basically change the cell value of E16 to go up by one or down by one if you click the left or the right arrow. Um, and then the user could just click through and switch pages that way instead of having to type the number in. The other option is you could make a data validation drop-down list with the page numbers and select page one, select page 200, whatever. Um, lots of options. Um, maybe we'll make a more advanced video later with uh, you know a more polished view of this pagination, but that's it for now. So let me know if you have any problems with this and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.